The Maple Leafs get set for another clash with the Capitals. We get some more updates on the injuries around the club. And the Lightning are nipping at the heels of the Buds down the stretch. We'll get to all of that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. Part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs. Your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centered podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And uh, if you got a strong feeling on how tonight's game might go, Dave, with the Leafs taking on the Washington Capitals, you can lay down your first bet. And uh, if it wins, get yourself $200. Uh, so you can do that over on FanDuel. What's up, buddy? How you feeling on a Thursday? Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. You know, it's again yeah, another day, another game day, another day where we gotta talk about this team. Hopefully, finding its groove at the right time. Well, finding its groove and like just getting healthy. Like, oh my goodness, it That's seems true. like every day someone else is getting hurt or missing practice, or we're finding out that. You know, things that seemed like it, it shouldn't really matter are now we're finding out, oh, actually, this player is going to be out for another game or another two games. And it's I don't know, like it's, it's becoming concerning how often we're seeing the injury bug or illness kind of creep into this team. Like it's not the time for that. This is where you want to start ratcheting things up. And all of a sudden, it seems like people are getting banged up left, right and center. Yeah, like the the opposite's happening with all the other teams that are kind of around the Leafs, and the Leafs are like, yeah, we don't have Marner, we don't have Yarn Kroc, we don't have Riley, we don't have this guy, we don't have that guy, and I'm like, oh, my. and like even like yes, uh, with practice yesterday, Sean keeps like, yeah, I wanted to run a full practice, I didn't have enough guys to run a full practice. I'm like, right. oh. Lee, <laughs> and that was after getting spanked. Like, like, well, not spanked, but like after yeah, kind they of, got uh, their they got their they got their lunch fed to them. By the yeah, time. well, somewhat, but like, yeah, that was after uh, an immature game, and I'm sure that's the type of game where Sheldon Keith would like to run a hard practice the next day uh, and and try and go through the systems and run all the routes and stuff, but was unable to do so. Ended up just being. Uh, kind of a lighter practice, more of a skill session, I guess. And, and you know, it's kind of weird to do that at this point in the season. But, you know, there's just, you know, so many guys who are injured and banged up and just couldn't really go. And even going into tonight's game, there's a lot of uh, game time decisions. Like, we already know that Mitch Marner, Yaron Kroc, obviously, and Joel Edmondson uh, have been already determined that they were not going to play this week. Mitch Marner, there was at least uh, Keith did come out and say he's hoping that Friday he could practice with the team and then most likely next week get back into uh, into the fold here for the Maple Leafs for maybe the final 10 games of the season down the stretch. That That's kind of what they were talking about for Mitch Marner. Um, but neither of those two expected to play tonight against the Capitals. Morgan Riley is going to be a game-time decision after missing the game against the New Jersey Devils. And then we finally got an update on Ilya Samsonov's injury, quote-unquote. Um, want to tell the folks the update there? Yeah, so Samsonov basically came out and said that he when he went to make the save, his calf hit the post, and he got a calf contusion, which for many people are asking, what the heck's a calf contusion? It's pretty much a contusion. It's a bruise. Baseball <laughs> players get them all the time. They play the next day in most cases. So Samsonov says he's good. He can play, but they are going with Joseph Wool for this game. But the part that gets me, a calf contusion is not bad. So why couldn't Keith just say, yeah, he's got a, he has a calf bruise. He'll be okay. Yeah. I don't know why he was being so secretive about it. Like he, I mean, he said he, he's not worried about, you know, he, he thinks he'll be okay. It's not as serious as maybe it looked. And 
I mean, I guess that's true. Like when he first goes down and he gets taken off the ice, you're thinking to yourself, Oh no, like, well, what happened? Like it, it does look a lot worse than, than what happened obviously. But yeah, like a calf could, it's a bruise, man. Like uh, I, I could bruise myself just by a quick little karate chop on my forearm and I could end up getting a contusion on my forearm. Like, I, I don't know, man. That's it's, it, it was really bizarre how, uh, the team was secretive about it. And then, you know, it turns out it's just a, a contusion, which yes, it's just a bruise and it's the scientific term for it. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure he'll be back and ready to go, uh, for this weekend's game. I, I would imagine. Uh, but in the meantime, Joe wall getting a third, uh, consecutive start here. And I think tonight's gotta be big for him. I mean, he didn't have a good game against the devils and, I think tonight's going to have to be one of those games where he, you know, really steps up, especially if a lot of these guys who missed on Tuesday are not unable to go. Like we already know Marner Edmondson not playing. If Riley can't go as well. I mean, that th those are two pretty big parts of that blue line. Um, you know, Joe Wall's probably going to have to come up big again tonight, just like he had to do against the hurricanes. And like he had to do in the last couple periods against the, the New Jersey devils. Yeah, we haven't seen just Wool get that, you know, I mean, we haven't seen it in a long time, but he gets that opportunity to bounce back quickly after a loss. Like, yeah, anytime he's had a loss, he's had to wait like three, four games to get back into the net. So I think this is crucial to see if he could do it and do it against, again, another tough opponent, a team that's fighting to make the playoffs right now. And we know how he did against the Capitals last time. They did win that game. But yeah, I... I think this was the right call just to give him that chance to see a, can he bounce back in two Samsov is, he says he's fine, but I'm sure they're probably just want to play that extra safe and make sure that nothing flares up. Although a contusion doesn't seem like anything really would go wrong there, but I think this is a, yeah, I think Joseph wall for him, this is such an important moment because everyone's talking about him being the future, right? Him being the guy going forward. These are games you got to start that you got to come up big in. You have to show that you can handle these moments. The Leafs are, are in a position right now where things are, again, tough. Injuries, they're shorthanded. They haven't been playing great defensively. He's had to stand on his head, and when he hasn't been able to, it's been, a, hasn't worked out for them. So, yeah. yeah, huge, huge moment. Yeah, he might have to steal one tonight. You know, you might have oh. to like the Capitals. They're they're a good team, man. Like this team is hot. They are rolling. I mean, the only loss that they've had in the last seven games is the loss last week to Toronto. Outside of that, you know, they're six and zero, and they're beating some good teams. Like Ovechkin is firing right now. Ovechkin <laughs> eight goals in his last six games. Like they've beaten teams. You know, Winnipeg. They've beaten Carolina. They've beaten Vancouver. Like they've beaten some pretty good teams over the course of their last seven games here. Um, the only team, like I said, they didn't beat was Toronto last week when the Leafs won 7-3. But outside of that, man, they've won a lot of hockey games. And uh, with Toronto kind of battered and beaten, um, you know, you got to think that the, the Capitals are smelling a little bit of blood in the water. And, and they're probably looking to pounce on this team early. Um, so Toronto's got to be prepared for it. Why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back and continue to tee up tonight's game. We'll get to our three keys for the Maple Leafs. And uh, Toronto, I mean, they're getting awfully close to that wild card spot with the Lightning getting another win last night against a quality, quality opponent. So we'll touch on that. And Dave, it's opening day for the Blue Jays. I got a couple questions for you, a little compare and contrast with the Jays and the Leafs. So we'll get to all of that and more in a little bit. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You listen to Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the big tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. It's 200 bucks to use on spreads, money line. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com and bet uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut 
down the Nets. Hockey also available over on FanDuel. Again, game tonight, Leafs and Capitals. Make a $5 wager on that game. If it wins, you get yourself $200 in bonus bets. FanDuel official uh, sportsbook of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leaves podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti here. We are your hosts for the Locked On Leaves podcast, uh, a daily Maple Leaf centric show. Uh, we have five shows a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can find them whichever platform you use to download your audio podcast. So we can also be found up on YouTube as well. Just search up Locked On Leaves. And uh, yeah. Make sure that you are subscribed and hit the little notification bell so you know exactly when we're dropping those new episodes uh, each and every day. It's all Leafs all the time. And speaking of the Maple Leafs, they got a game tonight against the Red Hot Washington Capitals. Like we were mentioning, this team's won six of the last seven games. Their one loss was to Toronto last week and the Leafs in fact have won both of the games against the Capitals so far this year so the Leafs looking for the series sweep of the Washington Capitals uh tonight Dave what are your odds uh what are the odds uh that it happens tonight and what to you are the three keys to ensure it does well I mean we already know the Leafs are um slight favorites in this game if you go and check out the odds on FanDuel but the big big thing here for Leafs minus 185 on the money line last I checked yeah so not no they're that's pretty I would not say heavy favorites but they're they're favorites nonetheless the big one here is um the penalty kill we already know that if the if the if the Cavs are getting a power play they have shown that the play that they're going to go to is to pass the puck to Ovechkin. It's no secret. They've been doing this for God knows how long, ever since this guy's been in the league. Yeah. Um, they'll even do it on a two-on-one where the guy probably should shoot the puck but decides to pass it off. I think you missed that. I don't know if you saw that highlight. I saw it. I did. I mean, I, I saw the highlight. Dylan Strom. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So just 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 be aware. I, it's not that hard Like to scout it. You just got to perfect it, right? Like You can scout for it. You got to execute it. Well, I mean, you don't have to scout for it. I mean, you and I, your your Nona Nona Morisuti, uh, knows what's happening here when it comes to Alex Ovechkin and what he's doing on the power play. It doesn't take a genius to scout that power play, but you know, just like Joseph Volleyman said last week, because he scored from his office uh, last week, right? And and even Joseph Wall said he's like, you know, it's coming, but you just can't stop it. Like it's it's insane. So um scouting it's one thing but yeah executing and not allowing that uh those passes to get to Ovechkin I guess is is key but you're right one of the keys tonight is going to be um special teams and that's you know shutting down the Washington Capitals but also let's get this power play going man like the, the, this least power play has really struggled and I understand like Mitch Marner's out and maybe if if Morgan Riley's not playing tonight too that 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 does take a bit of a hit although Lilligren's been given a little bit more run on the top unit of late, but like regardless, there's there's too much firepower on this Leafs team, um, even with those guys not around uh, to to be in this funk. Like you're gonna tell me that Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, uh, Bertuzzi, like can't find goals here on the man advantage. I mean, they, they got to really start scoring some goals. I think special teams are gonna be a big one tonight. Um, a good start too. I think they got to get off to a hot start. Like Sheldon Keith just gave this team a good tongue lashing in the media the other day. He even said he said the same thing in the room to the guys after the game, which is something he doesn't do often. He doesn't often talk to the players after a game. He did that uh, against in the game after um, losing out to New Jersey. So I think that this team is going to come out on fire, and I think that you know getting. Uh, the lead early is going to be key, and then them dictating the game, much like they did uh, the other night. And then I just think they got to continue to to put pucks on net. Obviously, mm-hmm. like that's going to be the key. It's what they did the other night, and I think that'll continue to be su- su- a successful, um, you know, plan for them. Obviously, uh, what about you? What other keys do you have for tonight? Yeah, I mean, don't make those uh, self inflicting mistakes that have been happening far too often, odd man, leading to odd man rushes and things like that. You got to place 
more mature. Like yeah. we talked about how, the, how they said they were immature against the devils. Now you got to show that you've got a little bit of maturity and that you're able to overcome those mistakes that you've made. I think that's a big one there. And then the final one for me here is as good as the Capitals have played, you beat them. So you've got the blueprint. You've done it. Just go out and do it again, right? Like it's it's one of those things where yeah, the Capitals are playing better, but they're the, they're a team that you've had their number this year. So you gotta you gotta have the confidence in knowing that you can beat them. And you have to go out and prove that again. Yeah. So um, we'll see what they can do tonight. Should be uh, should be a good one. Seven o'clock puck drop. Leafs and Capitals down at Scotiabank <laughs> Arena, but a spot where Toronto has not fared very well. Like Toronto. They've won both the games this so far this season. Both those games have been in Washington. So it'll be interesting to see how things uh, kind of shake out tonight when they're back home, a place where, for whatever reason, the team has struggled. And, and that's another thing that y- you want the team to correct. Like, we've talked a lot about, you know, what do we want to see from this team down the stretch? I would like to see some more wins on home ice because for yeah. whatever reason, it, it, they're few and far between. Uh, compared to their wins on the road, which makes not a whole lot of sense. Uh, and, you know, I guess it's good that the, they're not going to have home ice advantage throughout the playoffs for that reason. But I still would like to see some much better home performances from uh, from the Buds, and hopefully that starts tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of them not playing well at home because really – there's no excuse for it. It's kind of like in in like you no know, in football where home your home field is supposed to give you the ultimate advantage. I understand Scotia Bank Arena is not exactly a tough environment for the opponent to play in, but at the same time, you got to give the you got to give the crowd something to cheer about, and that hasn't mm-hmm. really happened a lot this season, like as much this season as we'd like to see. So they got they got to wake up and and figure that out. I understand that you know. Not every game you're going to come out swinging for the fences, but you got to do it at home at least. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what they got tonight. Should be a good one. Uh, Last night, the Lightning had a lot when they beat the Boston Bruins. They are very, very close in the standings now with Toronto. We'll get to uh, where things sit with that on the other side. It's Jay's opening day. Jay's opening day. How do you think they will fare this season? We'll get to all of that more on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Lease podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the price you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers welcome back into the locked on at least podcast it's mike to stefano and dave more Sudi. Just a reminder, we are still on our road to 5K subscribers. We're hoping to get there by the playoffs. We need less than 200 subscribers. Less than 200. And look, I know a lot of listeners who listen to this podcast on a daily basis who have not yet subscribed to us uh, over on YouTube. I think the numbers are like 40% of our listeners are non-subscribers. So there's a lot of you guys. And if you want to win yourself a Maple Leafs jersey for playoff time, make sure you sub up and uh, you'll be eligible to win that jersey. So subscribe over at Locked on Leafs. Uh, be a friend, tell a friend about the show as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. Um, speaking of the playoffs, I mean, for a long time, it seemed like Toronto was kind of locked into that number three spot, but the Tampa Bay Lightning have been playing uh, some really good hockey of late. I mean, it's a team that 
uh, have won a bunch of games. They've won eight of their last 10 games, including a win last night against the Boston Bruins. Uh, obviously, uh, that's, a, that's a statement win, an impressive victory. And now just two points back of Toronto for that third spot in the Atlantic Division. Um, there's Toronto still has one game in hand, I might add, but these two have two meetings uh, now, between now and the end of the season still. Uh, are you getting a little worried that uh, that Toronto might fall into a wild card spot, Dave? It's hard not to be. Tampa is like they're rolling eight one one the last ten. Beat the Bruins, and like the big boys are are showing up for them. They're they're quite healthy, right? Then you know Vasilevsky is Vasilevsky again. You you have to be. This is a team that's won how many cups? They've been in the dance all this time. We all thought they were dead in the waters months ago, and now look at where they are, dude. They yeah. they do this every year, don't they? Every like year. there, there's a section of the season where things are going south. They're allowing a bunch of goals. They're not like, and then you sit there and you think, oh my god, this team. They've it's finally caught up to them. All the hockey has finally caught up to them. All right, they're over the hill. They're done. They're no longer what they used to be. And then they put on a stretch like this right before the playoffs. And now I'm like, oh god, the lightning might be might be roaring up for another run here. Like it. They're because they're getting to a point where the way that they've played over the last little bit and that statement win last night against Boston, they get to a point now where it's like they they are definitely a team to pay attention to again in the Eastern Conference. And there's already a few teams they got to pay attention to. Obviously, Boston being one of them, Florida, Carolina, New York, Tampa's getting themselves into that conversation and like our neck and neck now with Toronto um, as you know one of those teams that are on the fringe of cup contender status i would say but are trending in that direction so um yeah i i i do think that there is something to be said about toronto falling into a wild card spot and let's say they end up with the crossover that wouldn't be so terrible right like if they end up having a crossover and play i don't say carolina or new york in the first round if they end up in a wild card spot would that be the worst thing in the world? I don't know. Like I, I know they're good teams. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I'd rather play them, but spice it up. You know, something new. Go through the Metro instead of the gauntlet that is the Atlantic Division. Uh, might might be different and and might work out better for Toronto. Yeah, the only issue with that is I think it depends on. Who finishes with the better record between the Metro Division winner yeah. and the Atlantic one? And like, look, the, the difference is not that much. The Bruins are one point behind uh, the Rangers. It can easily yeah. happen. Um, yeah, I mean, look, they're going to be on the road anyways, regardless of who they play in round one, whether it's on the Metro side or on the Atlantic side, they're going to be on the road anyways. Yeah. So you might as well embrace the fact that you're probably going to have to run the gauntlet anyways. Like this, it's it's no secret. And look, let the Tampa Bay Lightning have have to take care of that. The Bruins and the pan like and the are the Panthers, right? It's not not the worst thing in the world. I don't think the Bruins or the Panthers want to get the Lightning either. They're not an easy out in the playoffs. Like the Leafs beat them last year. I know that, but that was a hard fought series. Like no, oh yeah, like right, for sure. Like, right? And arguably, the Lightning played better than Toronto in that series. Like yeah, they got goalied for a change right yeah, exactly so i wouldn't hate it like you know let's say the least played uh the rangers in round one carolina could easily fall in round one too right like if if it's washington or if it's philly because mm. no it's i think it's very unlikely that that I, one happens well <laughs> Phil, maybe the philly one the washington one i also think it's unlikely i mean they're <laughs> playing well don't get me wrong but like I would I mean, put I a know. lot of money. I, I would I would wager a lot of money on FanDuel yeah, that that the the Carolina Hurricanes, if they end up in the two three, yeah. um, that they move on. I well, I mean, with the way that the uh, new additions have been working out for them, I probably would agree with that, dude. Both Gensel and Kuznetsov have been great since getting to Carolina. So yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why I'm trying to talk into the universe that they would fall out of round one. I'm not actually thinking it's gonna yeah. happen. It's just one of those like if it could happen, you know. I mean, uh, sure, uh, anything could happen, right? Like <laughs> Bruce lost to the Panthers in one run last year. 
Right. And and the Lightning, before they, you know, went on their cup tear, they lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets in, in the first round. And when they had that swept. unbelievable season, <laughs> swept in the first swept. round. So, yeah. you know, anything could happen, obviously. Um, but hey, at the end of the day, man, like there's there's good teams on both sides, the Metro and the Atlantic. Uh, so basically, I think what I'm getting at is falling out of third place in the Atlantic wouldn't be the worst thing in the no. world. I don't think so. You know, like regardless of who you play, whether it's going to be Carolina or it's going to be New York or it's going to be Florida or it's going to be Boston, all four are still possibilities at this point in the season. They're all really good teams, and it's going to be a really tough game regardless. Um, so I guess it doesn't really matter. If the Lightning close in on Toronto and bump them down into a wild card spot, I don't think it's going to be all that different. Let's not forget the Florida Panthers were also a wild card team last year. They yeah. ran the gauntlet and they went on that run. So it being a wild card team, yeah, it may sound like oh, you're third in the Atlantic and now you're out of into a wild card spot. I guess there's people have that thought process, but look, as you said, the opponents are all good. There's no you can't look at this this like gauntlet like this playoff bracket and say, Yeah, we'd rather have that team. They're all kind of have their own pick your poison sort of features to them yeah 100 percent um really quickly i want to touch on the blue jays because it's uh it's opening day and uh if you haven't yet go check out our our sister's show the locked on jays um i'm sure they've got a terrific show. in fact i know they do i've got it lined up to go listen to uh on uh on my uh on my walk later on today getting me set for opening day it's four o'clock game which is perfect you got a 410 first pitch oh, yeah. for the jays leading into your seven o'clock puck drop for the maple leafs it's it's really it was perfectly done by uh by mlb i'm sure they did not even think about it or even take a look at the maple leaf schedule but it does not work out all. perfectly for toronto sports fans to go blue jays opening day leads into Leafs and, and Capitals. Uh a lot of couch sitting uh this afternoon, which is why you know you gotta get gotta get all of your chores and duties uh and, and errands done throughout uh the the morning and early afternoon to make sure you're ready to go for that couch sitting session. Um but how you feeling about the Blue Jays buddy? I know both of us are pretty big Jays fans uh as well. So you know we're hoping for some success this season. But where's your uh where are you at with the Jays this year after what you saw happen last season, the off season that occurred, the spring that we just watched? Where are you at, buddy? Yeah, I mean, obviously felt underwhelming in terms of the additions they brought in, kind of similar to the Leafs off season, where it was kind of an underwhelming. Uh, just because, you know, sight set on Otani. Otani doesn't happen. Juan Soto doesn't happen. And then it's Bellinger. like... Bellinger yeah, Bellinger doesn't happen. happen, so it's like, well, and look, I actually don't mind Justin Turner. I think Turner's been actually pretty good this spring, right? You got yeah, Joey Votto, fine. like Joey Votto's around. That's kind of a good nostalgia feel to it. Yeah, um, but it's kind of like it's, I love their pitching. I've always been a fan of their pitching. The bullpen, eh, especially because they got some injuries there with Romano and Swanson out. This okay, th- that I'll, uh, yeah, sure, I suppose so. But out like healthy, they've got a really good bullpen, like. This is oh, the yeah. first time in, gosh, I don't know how long, where, you know, right from the start of the season, it feels like they're ready to rock from a bullpen perspective. It feels yeah. like every year, you know, it always feels a bit light, and it's like we're screaming at Ross Atkins to make a trade in, like, May, and it never really happens until, like, June, <laughs> and maybe early July until he finally makes a deal. But I feel like the bullpen's right to rock right from opening day this year. I mean, the injuries to Romano and Swanson obviously do make it a bit more difficult to have faith. Uh, that's your setup, man, and, and your closer, your eight and ninth inning guys. But, you know, Yimmy Garcia is is a player that I feel comfortable stepping in uh, yeah. for, you know, the first week or so until – Romana comes back and they've got some other nice pieces to that bullpen. Chad green, um, you know, mm-hmm. has, uh, you know, has had a lot of success in this league. Uh, I think that he'll be a solid addition to the pen. So uh, I like what they've got cooking um, from a pitching perspective as well. Obviously last year, you saw the success that that rotation had. I'm hoping they can have 
similar success. Uh, Kevin Gosman is going to be one to watch a little bit after this, you know, interesting spring that he had Manoa, obviously what happens there with him this season. Um, it's the bats. It's the, it's always going to be, can the bats okay. come through for this team? That was a problem last year. Uh, but it's, it's funny when you look at the Leafs and you look at the Jays, um, there are a lot of similarities and it's like, this team's going to go however far their stars take them. Like, yeah. If Vladdy has that MVP season he had, you know, a few years ago, seems going to have a lot of success. You can throw Boba Shed in there as well. You know, if he can go out there and if he can hit, you know, for 325 bombs, like they're going to have a lot of success uh, this season, I think. But those two players in particular are going to have to have mammoth years um, for that to happen. So, it, which again is very similar to what we talked about with Matthews and Marner. You could throw the lander obviously into the equation there for uh, for Toronto uh, for the Maple Leafs, but there are a lot of uh, a lot of similarities between the two clubs, which is funny to say. And with that being said, uh, I guess my my final question to you, we'll kind of wrap this up: is will the Jays finish above or below where the Leafs finish in their division? I'm gonna say above. Yeah, <laughs> I think really the only teams that are better than them in the ALEs are the Yankees and the Orioles. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Red Sox and Rays are at the J are at the Jays level. Like I think the this is the year I think we finally see the Rays take a step back. The Red Sox <sighs> got better, but that. they're still we, not great. How can you ever doubt the Rays, man? How can you ever doubt that team? Eventually, eventually their formula is not going to work anymore. Yeah, we've been saying that for years and then they go and they go to a world make a world series run yeah, yeah i just i just think other teams in that it, like like who thought the orioles would finally put it together yeah they're they, they're young piece they, and they got more young guys coming up that's why like i think like the orioles are like now the new rays where they got the young guys they got the unproven guys that are stepping up so i think the jays they're going to be middle of the pack in that AL East, unless the big boys come up and, and start playing to their potential. Then that's where I think they could potentially make a run, but yeah, it's not AL East remains the, the toughest division in that American league. In my opinion, I know that in the West, the Rangers and the Astros are pretty good. The Mariners are hanging around, but I think it remains the AL beast. As oh, usual. yeah. Yeah, the AL beasts are always, always uh, a tough division. You got the Stro show back in the division two, oh, pitching yeah. with, with the pinstripes. That's going to be a marquee game, one to circle when uh, when the Stro show comes back into Toronto wearing pinstripes. That's gonna that's gonna suck to see, but uh, that'll be a fun game to watch. One that I'll probably look to try and get some tickets to. Uh, probably use the game time app. To get those tickets why not use the code locked on 10 percent off 20 percent off why not um playoff team i think they're a playoff team that pitching is too good for them to not make the playoffs it's gonna yeah. whether it's well like where they seed i'm, I'm, no, hoping I'm sure it'll be well. i don't see him winning the division i'm sure it'll be I, well I, personally spot. i think it's still the orioles division to to lose yes. based on what happened last year but yeah i think wall card you gotta get yourself a better wall card position the best wall card position you can and hope the bats can do something <sighs> they had a good wall card position last year and uh well they kind of pissed it away so I don't know. We'll see. Sounds what familiar. Happening. Sounds familiar. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, man. Like these, there's a lot more similarities uh, between these two teams than than people think. But should be a fun, fun day. Good, uh, good sports watching day for Toronto sports fans. You got Jays at four ten. Jose Barrios on the mound, and then uh, seven o'clock. You got Leafs taking on the Capitals. Matthews versus Ovechkin. Uh, should be a great, great night in Toronto sports. Potentially a bar night. Could be one to go and check out a game at a bar, potentially. Hit up a patio for the Jays game. I might just do that. I might just do that. Uh, all right. 
We'll leave it there, Dave. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Vicky underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore More Studio. And follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow to recap tonight's Leafs and Caps game. Go Leafs, go. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.